Hello, my name is David Friedland and I'm with Texas Instruments. Welcome back to the online SysBIOS training workshop. In this portion, we'll be discussing SysBIOS software interrupts, also known as SWEs. Software interrupts are one of the chief threading models that BIOS provides, along with tasks. SWEs are patterned after hardware interrupts, also called HUIs, but provide a way in which processing can be done in a more controlled and less restrictive way. Software interrupts are preemptible in that each SWE is given an explicit priority, and higher priority SWEs preempt the lower priority ones. The SysBIOS scheduler completely controls this and handles all of the context saves and restores. One important feature that you need to understand is that, unlike tasks, SWEs operate on a single stack. This is both an advantage and a constraint, as it makes using SWEs very memory efficient, but also keeps them from blocking to allow other threads to execute. In other words, SWEs must always run to completion. In this sense, they are very similar in design to the hardware interrupt thread. The stack that is used by SWEs is the same stack that HUIs use. Every time a SWE is preempted, it will first need to push its context onto the stack. Because of that, the size of the stack that needs to be allocated is directly proportional to how many SWE priority levels the system will need. SWEs can provide a very important part of the system because this thread occupies the space between the hard real-time functions of HUIs and the background soft real-time processing that occurs in the idle thread. SWEs are not only similar in design to hardware interrupts, but they are very often called by them. A typical use case is for a system to have a hardware interrupt start a SysBIOS HUI thread. The functions within a HUI are those that require an urgent response time, such as servicing a peripheral. They tend to run at sampling rates, which can mean higher frequency, so a short duty cycle is essential. A HUI might be structured so that it can be preempted by a higher priority interrupt, but it is prioritized over all the other SysBIOS threads. Because of this, and because interrupts are typically disabled while the HUI is running, it's essential that it completes as soon as possible. In order for the HUI to do the minimum amount of processing possible, any less critical functions can be done by the software interrupt, which is made ready to run when the HUI calls SWE POST. Since the SWE is a thread that operates at a lower priority than the HUI, and because it can be preempted, it is used to run functions whose deadlines are more flexible. Instead of running at sample rate, SWEs often run at a frame rate on a whole set of samples. Duty cycles tend to be measured in milliseconds instead of microseconds, and they are definitely preemptible. I mentioned before that HUIs and SWEs are similar in design. We can use the same state diagram to describe both of these thread types. After creation, they are inactive until they are posted by some event that is, a hardware interrupt or a call to SWE post, at which point they are made ready to run. If the thread that is ready to run is the highest priority thread, then it will immediately start running, and it will always run to completion and cannot be suspended or terminated prior to that, and only gets preempted by a higher priority thread. And both HUIs and SWEs will run only once, regardless of how many times the thread was posted prior to it starting to execute. A more pictorial way of representing what I just said is shown here. This diagram shows three different threads running in a system. The highest priority thread is the hardware interrupt, or HUI, which is running periodically to collect some kind of samples. After the HUI collects nine samples, it posts a software interrupt, which the scheduler initiates as soon as the higher priority HUI is completed. The SWE can then begin processing the set of samples. However, it will be immediately preempted the next time the HUI is ready to run. When the SWE resumes, it can then finish running to completion. Since neither the SWE nor the HUI is running at that point, the scheduler will run the lowest priority idle thread. 
The advantage of this arrangement should now be clear. We have minimized the amount of time that we are processing hardware interrupts in the Hui because the processing of the buffer of data is deferred to a lower priority thread. Our system will ultimately be more reliable because we are narrowing the window in which we need to disable interrupts. And the software design will be more modular because the buffer processing is all within a separate function. Our system will also be more extensible because if we need to add additional types of processing later, we can introduce them in additional threads that are appropriately prioritized. Here is another example, and this time we have two SWEs running instead of one, both with the same priority. In this case, SWE A is posted and starts to execute, but of course when the Hui is made ready to run by an incoming interrupt, it's immediately preempted. The Hui posts SWE B and makes it ready to run, which is represented by the dotted line. However, it does not actually begin to execute until not only the Hui is completed, but also when SWE A is completed. SWEs of the same priority are scheduled first in, first out, so SWE A gets to run to completion before SWE B starts to run. And of course, when SWE B completes, the idle thread gets to run. Now in this example, we once again have two SWEs. However, this time they are running at different priorities. But I have also added another twist. Instead of the interrupt service routine running as a BIOS Hui, it is just running as a standard ISR. The diagram shows the lower priority SWE A running, but it gets preempted by the ISR, which in turn posts the higher priority SWE B. However, instead of SWE B starting to execute after the ISR completes, we see it starting to run right away. That's a clear violation of our SysBIOS scheduling rules, which mandates that SWEs should implicitly be considered a lower priority thread than the interrupt processing threads. The reason that this happened was because the BIOS scheduler didn't know that the ISR was running in the context of a Hui, and so the SWE was run in the same context. The preamble and postamble code that gets run in BIOS Hui's was not present in this case, so bad things were allowed to happen. If you'd like to see more information about BIOS Hui's, please check out the module of this training series where we discuss it in more detail. We'll now take another look at this example, but this time using a BIOS Hui to process the interrupt service routine. Because the Hui was configured with software interrupts enabled, it disables SWEs at the beginning of the ISR and re-enables them at the end. Now the world makes sense again, with the higher priority SWE preempting the lower priority SWE, but both getting preempted by the highest priority Hui. So far, I have only talked about software interrupts being posted via the SWE post call. However, there are actually additional ways to conditionally or unconditionally post a SWE. With each SWE that's created, its data structure will have a variable called the trigger that is used for conditional posting. This trigger is the size of a C integer, which means it will be either 16 or 32 bits, depending on what TI architecture you're running on. The API call SWE Inc. will unconditionally post the SWE, but will also increment the value stored in the trigger. SWEs are only run once to completion no matter how many times they are first posted, so SWE Inc. might be useful in some systems in which the software interrupt function needs to know how many times it was posted before running. SWE DEC is similar, but it decrements the trigger value before posting the SWE. This can be used to defer posting a SWE until it gets posted a certain number of times. SWE OR allows the application to bit OR the trigger with a mask value before posting. SWE AND N will only post the software interrupt when a mask value that is not ANDed with the trigger equals zero. That could be useful if there are multiple posts that all need to occur before the SWE runs. To make this more useful, the API call SWE GET trigger returns the latched value of the trigger when the SWE function was called. The reason the value is latched is because the actual trigger value 
will be reset to its initial value every time it's posted. This slide presents the runtime API of the SysBIOS SWE module. In this piece of code, I have created three different variables. The first two are types defined by the SWE module itself, the first being a structure that holds all of the various SWE parameters. The second variable is used to store the handle of the SWE that we will create. By calling SWE params init, we can fill the param structure with all of the default parameter values. We can then easily update the parameters that we want with different values, in this case the priority of the SWE, while not worrying about the others. We are also setting up an error block variable so that if the create failed, we could find out more information on why it failed. Finally, we call SWE create, which will instantiate the SWE instance and return back the handle to the new SWE. Also on this slide is a summary of the other API calls used to control a SWE. Creating a new SWE with the XGConf configuration tool is shown here. The SWE module itself can be configured to specify the number of SWE priority levels that are being used by the system. Constraining this value to less than the maximum is a memory optimization, since the SWE stack will need to grow every time one SWE can be preempted by another one of higher priority. Setting this value as low as possible will minimize the size of the stack allocation that is required. The SWE instance itself will be configured with the name of the function to be run, any static constant values that should be passed as an argument to this function, the SWE's priority, and also its initial trigger value. Thanks for listening to this portion of the SysBIOS online training. I hope it proved helpful. Please note that SysBIOS is included as a component to CoComposer Studio. However, if you would like to download SysBIOS as a standalone product, you can go to the webpage listed here. Also, if you have any questions about using SysBIOS, or if you would like to make suggestions on how to improve this training series, please post a comment to the TI E2E Forums BIOS page at the web address shown here. There are some very knowledgeable developers and users of SysBIOS who might be able to help you out. Good luck with your upcoming software development.